Storytime grown-ups and Storytime friends. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a really wonderful day. Well, my name is Miss Lisa. I get to do the story times at Worthington Park Library most of the time, but right now we're doing them here wherever you're watching this. All right. Our theme this week is all about love, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a minute, but first we're going to start with our song, The More We Get Together. So for the more we get together, we're going to use a few signs. The first sign that we're going to use is a sign for more, where we have our fingers give each other little kisses. More. Good job. The next sign we're going to use is a sign for together. We'll put our two fists next to each other and we'll stir a big pot together. Very nice. Our next sign that we're going to use is the sign for happy. Happy. I have no fun way to remember that. That's just how we do it. All right. And the last sign that you can use if you have super fast fingers that are ready to go is friend. So we'll put our two fingers up as hooks and then they'll give a hug and give a hug. Are you ready? All right. We'll sing this acapella. So we'll see where we start. I never know. All right. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. When your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends, the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Very nice job. I hope you were able to do the motions along with me. All right, so we are talking about love today, and you might be thinking that we're talking about like grown-up love, but we're not. We're talking about the kind of love that we show to everybody who takes care of us and the kind of loves that they show to us too. So sometimes taking care of us is a way of showing love. So we're going to talk a lot about different ways that you can show love to the people that you care about and that they might show love to you. All right, I always loved, we're very close to a holiday that's all about love. I always loved doing Valentine's Day with my preschoolers when I taught preschool. It was so much fun. We would do so many nice things for each other and it was just delightful. So we're going to focus on that aspect of Valentine's Day and of showing love. All right, our first story, might seem like a stretch, but give me a minute, okay? All right, it's called, If You Plant a Seed. All right, and it is by Kadir Nelson, who wrote the words and does the beautiful illustrations. And if you have gone to story time with me for a while, you have probably seen this book because I love it. All right, ready? If you plant a seed, if you plant a tomato seed, a carrot seed, and a cabbage seed in time with love and care. Look at how nicely they're waiting and reading to the, to the seeds. <gasps> Tomato, carrot, and cabbage plants will grow. Look at how excited they are about those plants. I know. That's how I look in the early spring when my garden's starting to come in. Oh, look at all those yummy. They look delicious, don't they? Oh, what do you see happening? What is that? Is it birds? What do you think the birds are doing? This is a story where you're going to need to tell me what's happening. So fill me in. Oh, grown ups, does that face look familiar? So what happens anytime I get like a snack out of a big tree. Yeah. What do you think the birds want? I think they want some of the food. <gasps> uh oh. Does it look like the rabbit's going to share the food? If you plant a seed of selfishness, that means not being willing to share and wanting everything for yourself. In a very short time. Oh no, I think the bird is yelling back. It will grow and grow and grow into a heap of trouble. What happened to all of the food? Can you tell? Now all of that food they worked so hard to grow is smashed. But if you plant a seed of kindness, 
So what did the mouse do? He gave the birds the last tomato. In almost no time at all, where'd the birds go? What's happening here? Huh? <gasps> the fruits of kindness. Can you see them? See the seeds getting dropped? We'll grow and grow and grow. What? That's a huge garden, isn't it? And they are very, very sweet. I absolutely love the illustrations in this book and I really love what it's talking to us about. It's not talking just about planting gardens, is it? No, it's talking about when we give kindness and love to other people, we get kindness and love back. Yeah. So I really adore this book. Grown ups, I highly recommend getting it out from the library so that you can look at the beautiful pictures because doing it this way just doesn't quite, doesn't quite work as well. So that one is If You Plant a Seed by Kadir Nelson. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other ways that we can show loving kindness to people. Sharing with them is one of the ways that we can do that. Well, what's something else we can do? Normally, when we're in story time all together, you would give me all of your ideas and I would write some of them down. And it's really hard because I can't do that right now. So just give me some of your good ideas. What are some ways that we can show love to other people? We can give hugs and kisses if they want them, and if it's okay with your grown-ups. Mm -hmm. You could make cards for a friend. That's a good idea. What's another way you can show love or kindness to somebody? Mm. You know one of the ways I love to show love? Food. I love to cook for people, especially if I don't have to cook for the people. That's my favorite kind of cooking. I think the grown-ups will understand that. All right, so we are going to read a story about somebody who shows love and kindness through cooking. This is called Thank You, Omu, and it's by Oge Mora. Pictures and illustrations, again. The illustrations are the pictures in the book, so I shouldn't have said pictures and illustrations. I should have said words and illustrations, huh? On the corner of First Street and Long Street, on the very top floor, Omu was cooking a thick red stew in a big fat pot for a nice evening meal. She seasoned and stirred and took a small taste. What a delicious stew, Omu said. Tonight's dinner will surely be the best I have ever had. With that, Omu put down her soup and, or spoon and went to read a book before supper. As the thick red stew simmered on the stove, its scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block until someone was at the door. When Omu opened it, she saw a little boy. Little boy, Omu would explain. What brings you to my house? I was playing with my race car down the hall when I smelled the most delicious smell, the little boy replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Mmm, stew, he sighed. That sure sounds yummy. Oh, hey friends, if you want to make your grown-ups day, you can greet whatever they made you for dinner with that. That would be a, a delightful response. Not, mm, I don't like that. Ooh, that smell sounds delicious. Good move. Omu thought for a moment. She was saving her stew for dinner, but she had made quite a bit. It would not hurt to share. Would you like some? The little boy nodded. And so Omu spooned out some thick red stew from a big fat pot for her nice evening meal. <gasps> Thank you, Omu, the little boy said, and went on his way. With that, Omu closed the door and went back to her book. As she read her thick red stew, scrumptious scent, that means yummy, yummy smell, wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block until someone was at the door again. When Omu opened the door this time, she saw 
a police officer. Miss Police Officer, Omo explained. What exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was on duty down the street and I smelled the most delicious smell, Miss Police Officer replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Ah, stew, she said, and her mouth watered. That sounds mighty tasty. Omo thought for a moment. There was still enough to share. Would you like some? The police officer nodded. Once again, Omu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Omu, the officer said and went on her way. And so for the second time, Omu closed the door and went back to her book. Sure enough, as soon as she read, her thick red stew's scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block. Until... Someone was at Omu's door. This time when she opened it, she saw a hot dog vendor. Mr. Hot Dog Vendor, Omu explained, exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was selling my hot dogs down the block when I smelled the most delicious smell, Mr. Hot Dog Vendor replied. What is it? What is it? Do you remember? Thick red stew. Oh, stew. The vendor licked his lips. That sounds quite delectable. Oh, that's another good one you could try at home. So Omu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Omu, the dog, hot dog vendor said, and went on his way. Throughout the day, people from all across the neighborhood knocked on Omu's door. She fed a shop owner, a cab driver, a doctor, an actor, a lawyer, a dancer, a baker, an artist, a singer, an athlete, a bus driver, a construction worker, and even the mayor stopped by. Do you know who a mayor is? That would be the person in charge of the city. And each time they knocked, Omu shared. Soon the sky darkened, the street lights brightened, and it was finally time for dinner. But when Omu opened her big fat pot of thick red stew for her nice evening meal, it was empty. Oh no. There is not one hint of stew left in there, is there? Very clean. Omu sniffled. There goes the best dinner I ever had. Sorry and blue, she sat at the table with her empty pot until... Who could it be, Omu wondered. When she opened her door, she saw the little boy, the police officer, the hot dog vendor, the shop owner, the cab driver, the doctor, the actor, the lawyer, the dancer, the baker, what everyone she fed today was at her door. I'm sorry, everyone, Omu sighed. My thick red stew is all gone and I have nothing left to share. The little boy tugged at Omu's sleeve. Don't worry, Omu, we are not here to ask. We are here to give. The police officer carried in a fresh salad. The mayor entered with a roast chicken. The baker brought a collection of sweet goodies. Even the little boy presented Omu with something special in a shiny red envelope. Everyone who had knocked on Omu's door that day squeezed inside her tiny apartment and together they ate and danced and celebrated. While Omu's big fat pot of thick red stew was empty, her heart was full of happiness and love. That dinner was the best she had ever had. And look, what was in the red envelope that the little boy brought? It's a nice little card for Omu. It says, thank you, Omu. All right, you did a really good job. That's kind of a long story, but I love that it, it teaches the same thing as the first story, that when we give good things to other people, good things can come back to us. And that's a way that we show love. And Sometimes we just need to show love to other people, even if they're not showing love back. That's an important part too. All right, I have a couple of songs I thought we could do. The first one is Bushel and a Peck. I think you've done that one with me before. It is my littlest one's favorite song. So sometimes I sing it to her and sometimes I sing it with you. Are you ready? We're gonna do the sign for I love you which looks like this. It looks like this because this is I. Love starts with the letter L. And U starts with the letter Y, confusingly enough, which is this sign. So we do all three of these to say, I love you. Are you ready? I love you. 
a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck, and a bushel and a peck. I love you. Good job. I wish I could give you hugs, friends. I hope that you are getting lots of love from people. I know. It's hard when we can't give each other lots of love right now, huh? Actually, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. All right, we're going to do one more story, and then we'll do a little song and a rhyme. Are you ready? This one is called One Love, and it's based on the song by Bob Marley and adapted by Sidella Marley and illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Ooh, Newton. <laughs> it apparently wants to jump right off on you. There we go. One Love. One heart, let's get together and feel all right. Do any of you have a puppers that you like to snuggle with? Or a baby doll? Yeah. One love, what my family gives to me. One love, what the flower gives the tree. One love, what Mother Earth gives the tree. One love, one heart, let's get together and feel all right. One heart, like the birds, I long to be free. One love, like the river runs to the sea. What are they doing in the pictures? Keep an eye out because the picture's growing to something. One heart, like the music, feel the beat. Let's get together and feel all right. One love, when your hand reaches out for mine. Oh yeah, holding hands is another way we can show love. Huh? One heart, when we touch, a new world we'll see. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. I don't know if you could tell, but all together, they were all working to make a park. It says one love park. And look, there's a mayor. We just talked about mayors, didn't we? All right, very nice job. Now, some people show love by singing songs to other people and one of my favorite people when I was about your age was a man named Mr. Rogers. And you might have seen his show if you have a mama who likes to show you old shows or a daddy who likes to show you old shows. Um, or you might have seen Daniel Tiger, which is from his son. But when I was little, Mr. Rogers used to sing to us a lot through the TV, kind of like I'm doing for you right now but much better because he was a really good singer. So I am going to sing to you one of my favorite songs from when I was little and Mr. Rogers used to sing to me. It's you I like, every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new, I hope that you'll remember even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like, it's you yourself, it's you. I hope you have lots of people around who are showing you how much they love you. And I hope you know how much we like you and miss seeing you here at the library. I had a couple other stories I wanted to tell you about really quickly. I'm not gonna read them to you, but they are lovely and you should definitely give them a check out. Are you ready? All right, this first one is called Hair Love. And it is by Matthew A. Cherry and illustrated by Vashti Harrison. Um, beautiful story about a dad who's helping his little girl get ready for a big day. And they try out a lot of hairstyles and it's pretty funny too. So you should give it a try. The next book I was gonna mention is Blanket of Love if you have a littler one or a little sibling. It's by Alyssa Satin Capicelli and illustrated by Brooke Boynton Hughes. And it's a super cute little read about the love that's all around us. And then I have three books all about hugs because I couldn't stop myself. 
All right, hugs are usually one of the first ways my friends say that they can show love, but sometimes friends do not want hugs. So I thought this was an important group to pair together. Are you ready? Hug Machine is super silly, and it's by Scott Campbell, and it's about a little boy who goes around and just hugs everything. He's very good at hugging. It is obviously not during a global pandemic, but it is a beautiful story, lots of fun. Um, and I have always really liked doing this one in story time as though he is a professional wrestler. So have fun with that, grown-ups. All right, the next story I wanted to talk about is the opposite of that. It's called Don't Hug Doug. And he doesn't like it. And this is by written, uh, written by Carrie Fins Finison and drawings are by Daniel Weissman. And it is a great story about how people have control over their own bodies. And if you don't want hugged, you don't have to be hugged. Because some people don't like hugs. I am a hugger, so that's hard for me to understand. But people like different things. And people show love in different ways. So if you have one who's a little bit affectionate and maybe doesn't understand that other people don't like giving hugs or getting hugs, this might be a good read for you. Also, Doug is a delightful person. He just doesn't like hugs. All right. And then the last one I wanted to tell you about all about hugs is, I think Miss Karen's going to read this one next week, so I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's called While We Can't Hug, and it's by, I don't even know how to say the first name, I think it's Owen McLaughlin and Polly Dunbar, and it's a beautiful story that is kind of unique to this time of life, because we can't give everybody hugs that we want to give hugs to, huh? All right. I hope that you have some good ideas of ways that you can show people love. If it's sharing a story with them, which is one of the ways Miss Lisa shows love, or cooking a fun meal together, spending time together, giving cuddles and snuggles, um, singing a song, or making a card. There are so many ways that you can show love to the people in your life. So I hope that some of those will work well for you and that you'll have lots of fun ideas for your family. All right, let's end with Tickle the Clouds. Are you ready? Tickle the clouds and tickle your toes. Turn around, tickle your nose. Reach down low, reach up high. Story time's over. Let's wave goodbye. Bye, friends. I hope you know it's you I like.